And welcome back, YouTube! This is Booster Buster. After what feels like forever of not uploading a video, finally coming back at you with a new video. <clears throat> uh, I just want to mention real quick, the last month, month and a half, I just did not have the drive, the motivation to want to do a YouTube video. I was just... I don't, I don't want to say burnt out, but I was just... I, I just was not in the mindset of doing YouTube. But now, I feel more refreshed, I feel better, I think I'm ready to do some more videos again. And today's video is going to be a fun one, as I got to share with you some recent Yu-Gi-Oh card pickups. Uh, I got four lots from eBay, one lot from TCG Player, and one lot from a local card shop. Without further introduction, let's get into this. All I did was take the lots that I got from the mail out of the packaging uh, and uh, put them on the table. So this, I haven't even opened up the, uh, the cardboard that they wrapped it in yet. So I'm going to be as surprised as you are about the condition of most of these cards. So hopefully they're in great condition, but we won't find out until I actually take them out of their concealed packaging. So first up, we got a Goblin Fan from the Falsebound Kingdom. Now I did actually pick up a Goblin Fan before this, however, uh, the condition was subpar, so I unfortunately, uh, I didn't return it. I'd, I got a partial refund for it, and that was that. I didn't feel that the previous uh, gob Goblin fan was good enough to be uh, binder worthy, I guess. So this will hopefully solve that problem. Alright, so let's tap it out. Not really tap friendly. Some of these, uh. Some of the. Yeah, this one is not tap friendly. Some of them are tap friendly, some of them aren't. So grab it gently, just try to grab the, uh. Edge. There we go. Don't want to crimp the card any. And I got news for you. It's not just one Goblin fan. It's two Goblin fans. I'm trying to get a playset of some of the uh, video game promos because I really, especially the older ones, I really love this uh, hollow style that they did for a lot of the old video game promos. So, let's just take a quick look at this card. Uh, maybe a little bit of edge wear up there, but that's fine. That's to be expected. A little bit of edge wear on the bottom. It's hard to tell unless you have something back it up like that. I'm just gonna... Let's just zoom it in here. Uh, maybe a little bit of corner wear, but not too bad. That corner's pretty crisp. This corner's pretty crisp. I gotta say, the corners on this are actually pretty good, so I'm very satisfied with that. Usually, especially a lot of the older promos like this tend to have uh, either damaged or bent corners, so this, this one's pretty nice overall, I would say. Got the official Yu-Gi-Oh! stamp, so it's not Asian English. Got the holographic uh, tile on the bottom. Yeah, very nice card. Now, the card itself is not very good, but in terms of play, but very nice card to have the collection. Like I said, I'm trying to get a playset of each, so I'm just missing one, and I can officially have a playset of Goblin fans. This one a little bit of edge wear, just like the other one. Corners are, uh, yeah, corners are pretty crisp again.
See if there's any bends, any creases. Doesn't look like it. Maybe a little bit of an indentation there. But honestly, that's that's nothing. That that's definitely still worthy of being a binder ready. I like that. Let's just for fun take a quick look at this effect. It's not very large. A continuous trap card, as long as this card remains face up on the field, destroy all flip summon monsters of level 2 or lower. At that time, the effects are not activated. So, uh, this would be very powerful against uh, Jar decks, against. Are Ghost Tricks level 2? I think there's some level 2 Ghost Tricks. It could be pretty powerful against that type of deck. Um, but yeah, mostly jars and ghost tricks this card this deck or this card could really be effective against. Otherwise, if level two and lower decks, especially flip effect decks, are not an issue, there's no reason to run this card. So that is Goblin Fan times two. Up next a lot of you probably know this card just by the uh, looks of it here. I hate it when they put multiple cards in one uh, card sleeve like this. I think it just lead, tends to lead to damage of the, or gives a higher chance to damage the cards when you put multiple in one. I understand why they do it because they're trying to save money, but at the same time, you also want to make sure that the player gets the uh, cards in halfway decent condition. Especially when you pay good money. For certain promo now this card isn't that expensive but still Cert certain promos are expensive and you want to make sure I mean you wouldn't put a just for an example three harpies pet dragon in a package like that no you'd sleeve each one individually in a hard package by itself all right so we got not one not two but a whole playset of widespread ruin from uh, DOD, is that the Duelist of Destiny? Uh, it's a, it's the one game for the Xbox. The OG Xbox, by the way. Let's take a look. Little bit of little bit of edge wear, not too bad. Take a look at the back. Maybe just a hair bit of creasing, but that's not too bad. You, you, you get some uh, cards out of the pack, straight out of the pack that are worse than this, which is sad. <laughs> Edges seem really crisp. What is that? I don't know what that is up there. A little dent. Maybe just a little bit of dirt, maybe I could try to remove that later. Honestly, this is a pretty dang good condition card, I like that. Very nice. Let's see... Pretty good. Little bit of little bit of corner wear on the top left there, but I uh, trust me, I've seen much much worse. Yeah, another pretty dang good card here. That's widespread ruin, and let's take a look at the last one. 
See something? I thought I seen some edge wear there. I thought I seen a bit of a crease, but that could have been my imagination. A little, little bit of this, uh, I don't know what you call it, like indentation on the back right here. Little uh, edge wear on the bottom left of the back here. Honestly, though, I'd still throw that in the binder. That's pretty good. Let's just take a look at Widespread Ruins Effect. For those of you who do not know, it's a normal trap. Let's take a look. You can only activate this card when your opponent declares an attack. Destroy one monster with the highest attack among your opponent's attack position monsters. <clears throat> So it's not terrible, um, it's still, there's still much better options, uh, obviously Mirror Force would probably be a much better option than this card, just because it destroys all of your opponent's attack positions monsters, not just one, and in order for them to declare an attack, unless it's Super Heavy Samurai, um, or some very weird, uh, monster archetype out there they're almost always going to be in attack position so yeah that's widespread ruin very nice to have a play set of that forgotten card all right so we're going to go to this one next What is, question of the video, what is your favorite uh, promo card from Yu-Gi-Oh? It could either be one that you have, or one that you just have always admired, wanted, but just never have been able to obtain. There's one promo card that I want really, really bad. But I know I'm never going to be able to get, just because of how expensive and rare that particular card is. I believe it was a Yu-Gi-Oh! Championship card. And it was uh, Kana. And it goes for a lot of money. And this one, I, I, don't, I don't know if you consider it a promo or if you consider it a, a set card. Because it did technically come in packs. But uh, tournament pack number one. I always wanted Mechanical Chaser, but that card is stupid expensive now. And I know I understand they reprinted it, but I want the original tournament pack one version. Not the uh, reprint versions that they have done. And like I said, I, I know... They reprinted it, but uh, I've always wanted the original Ultra Rare Mechanical Chaser. The card itself is 100% useless. It's a normal monster, level 4, uh, 1800 attack. It's You could literally do a set, have a 7 colored fish do pretty much the same thing. But uh, yeah, just a card I always wanted. Ah, come on. There we go. As you can tell, I have a couple of Dark Sages here. Let's check out the condition of this particular lot of cards. That's a... Uh... Okay, Pokemon Sleeve. I was like, what is that? So we got a playset of Dark Sages. Very, very nice.
also from the same Xbox game that White's Red Ruin came from. This person really knows their stuff. They tripled sleeve this. What a beautiful card. Always important to check the back of them. A little bit of scratchy. Oh, that's like almost glue. That ain't good. Well, not glue, but like a little bit of sticky. Very nice card overall, though. Very minimal wear. Definitely worth the pickup. Now, I've switched from eBay over Troll and Toad as of right now just because uh, Troll and Toad prices tend to be a bit higher than eBay, which is or tend to be on the high side of what eBay is asking for, and sometimes you can find some decent deals, especially if you buy in lots over single cards. Don't get me wrong, I still love buying from Troll and Toad if I want to make a big mass purchase on, like, commons and stuff, but when it comes to, uh, especially promos like this, uh, TNT tends to be on the high side. A little bit of edge wear. And another great thing, advantage that uh, eBay sellers have over sites like Troll and Toad and uh, most of the sellers on TCG Player is uh, almost every seller on eBay posts pic actual pictures of what they have and that is a big difference from being able to tell if a card's actually light play or if it's more moderate play or heavy play or even near mint which it's near impossible to find really, really good near mint cards because, uh, yeah, when the, the card's older, it's much harder to find near mint just because people didn't take care of the cards when they're younger. A little bit of a crease right here. corners are sharp. Yeah, just that little bit of a crease and this card is would be near perfect. Uh, can I tap this one out? Ah, I can tap this one out. Nice. I thought I could. Ah, the double sleeve is getting in the way of that. I've had sellers put uh, Yu-Gi-Oh cards just in these without any sort of extra sleeve and you got to be very careful removing it because it's, you could damage it very easily. Usually tapping it like that gets it out all the time if they forget to put a sleeve on the card. I do appreciate them uh, double sleeve in this, so this is a more more on the pricey side of a promo card, so. Maybe a little bit of curling, but the curling is, honestly curling is like one of the least issues. If it's a crease, that's bad, but curling, curling, I, honestly I expect most holo cards to curl. And once you put it in the pressure of a binder, usually it'll eventually flatten out a little bit. Maybe a bit of a crease forming right there. Get that sucker in the binder right away. But yeah, that is the three Dark Sages. Let's go ahead and just read his effect. We got a level 9 Dark. Uh, 2800 attack, 3200 defense, so pretty powerful. 
Spellcaster effect. This card can only be special summoned from your hand or your deck by offering one Dark Magician on your side of the field as a tribute. When you uh, succeed in the effect of Time Wizard. So you have to activate Time Wizard's effect, have Dark Magician on the field, successfully activate Time Wizard's effect, uh -huh. and then sacrifice Dark Magician. But the nice thing is you can pull this guy from your hand or your deck, so if you don't ha if you have Dark Magician and Time Wizard, you don't need this guy in your hand to activate it, you could, ha you could just pull it from the deck. So that's at least halfway decent. At that time, select, is that three? One spell card from your deck, add it to your hand, and then shuffle your deck. So he's a one-off effect. So you have to be running Time Wizard and Dark Magician in order to activate this guy. And then you get, your reward is a 2832 defense uh, beat stick that can fetch you one spell card from your deck and add it to your hand. In my opinion, definitely not worth it. There's much better cards that can give you that effect over time. Really nice card to have in a promo, though. That is Dark Sage from DoD, the Xbox original Xbox uh, game. All right, we're moving on to the final eBay lot. I'm saving the... Uh, TCG player and the uh, lot from local game store for last. Ah, uh, there you are. I was very happy to get this lot. Very excited to see what we have here. Uh, it's these bendy ones. I don't like these ones very much. see what we have. So first up we have Metal Zoa from the Falsebound Kingdom, the same one that Goblin Fan is from. 3,000 attack, 2,300 defense. Let's check the card over. Uh, maybe a bit of edge wear on the right hand side. A little bit of indentation around the text. A little bit of a I don't I don't know if it's like a crease or a bow, but right there and down at the bottom here too. Yeah, bottom right here, right around the attack defense. I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but there's a little bit of damage. Uh, not bad overall, though. That's Metal Zoa, 3,000 attack, 2,300 defense. Let's check his effect. Uh, this monster can only be special summoned from your deck to your side of the field by offering Zoa equipped with meta, uh, Metamorph as a tribute. Now, in my opinion, I think Goblin Fan was not supposed to be the trap card with the Fossilbound Kingdom. I think it was supposed to be Metamorph, because you get Zoa, Meta Zoa, so Metamorph. Or metal morph, metal morph, would have been the logical step. But for whatever reason, they put metal morph with the uh, the special edition version of um, the PlayStation One game, along with Harpy's Pet Dragon. Or the Forbi Forbidden Memories. That's right. They put it with Forbidden Memories with Harpy's Pet Dragon and Red Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon, or is it Red Eyes Metal Dragon? One of those two. And I understand, I think you need uh, Metal Morph to summon Red Eyes Darkness Dragon, but at the same time, it made a lot more sense to put it with this lot than it would have with that lot, in my opinion. And then we have a normal monster. You don't see those too often as uh, promotional cards. Mm -mm. Let's take a quick look. Uh, yeah, we got a bit of a crease here, unfortunately. Right there. Uh, 
I think part of the creasing is due to these. I really despise these flimsy uh, card protectors. Anybody out there who sells cards, please use these, the hard plastic shell ones. Don't use these, uh, these carpy, flimsy ones that could really bend a card. Freaking useless. I'm sorry, I'm just passionate about that. Yeah, the crease kind of goes from here, the right, right, right through the defense, the same spot as uh, Metal Zoa up through here. So it has, it has to be something with that packaging. I'm sorry, I really dislike that style uh, of a uh, deck pro or card protector. Yeah, and you could, re it's really noticeable on the back, right here. Right where my thumb's at. Kind of goes all the way up the side. I'm sorry. I just really don't like that. Really fun card. I don't know if I'm going to keep this. I'll debate. I didn't pay too much for it because those cards are typically more expensive, so... Be because I got them for a good price, I might just hold on to them. And now we're going to move to TCG Player. I got a pretty fun lot from a TCG player. I'm really excited to share this with you. If it uh, wants to open. The, believe it or not, this is actually going to be my very first purchase from TCG player. So, I have high expectations. I've been reading a lot of reviews and it seems like a lot of people are really big sticklers when it comes to uh, near mint condition. So... If I were to ever sell cards, I'd probably put most of mine in a... Uh, light play, just because people are like, Meh, it has this little tiny indent on it, it's not near mint at all. Now this crease, on the other hand, I think that's just from the packaging that they use, which is sad but true. This tape does not want to come undone. Sorry about this. And I don't want to potentially damage the card. There we go. Just had to crack the tape a little bit. Are you ready? We got Barox. A completely uh, worthless card in today's, well not worthless, useless in terms of playability. But it actually has some monetary value. A card that was only printed once as far as I know. And it was part of the uh, Astro Packs. It's a normal fusion that was, that was released a long time ago in Japan but never in the USA. And it's... Look at that attack stat. It's a level 245... Fiend Fusion, Frenzied Panda, and Ryu Kishin, Ryu Kishin, 1380 attack, 1530 defense. If you get an attack off, or if your opponent uh, attacks into the sky and cannot destroy it, it's going to throw uh, life points into a frenzy, because, <laughs> I mean... 1530 defense, 1380 attack, I mean, the, your opponent is going to hate you for having to keep track of that weird stat. Just kind of reminds me of that Reaper of the Cards. That's Barox. And I got not one, not two, but three of him. I love these old uh, fusion cards that don't have a uh, effect, just because they're so Yu-Gi-Oh! nostalgia. I mean, 
you would never see... I shouldn't say that. You would probably never see a card printed like this again with those particular stats. It's all going to be rounded off. It's all going to be... Uh, it's all going to be much more powerful than this. You ain't going to see a level 5 fusion with 1400 attack released probably anytime soon outside of speed duels. <clears throat> but yeah, that's Barox. And part number two of my TCG player order. Just needed to break the tape. We got Man Eating Black Shark. This is from Astro Pack number six. The other uh, Barox is from number two. Once again, another really weird. Uh, normal fusion monster and I got two of him look aiming for a play set and it's C common plus gruesome Gru plus uh, gruesome goo plus Amazon of the seas so three monsters to summon this level 5 2100 attack 1300 defense monster definitely definitely not worth it but the fact, uh, these cards are just so nostalgia. It was released in Japan years ago, but never in the USA. It's so fun to have these uh, fusion cards like this. You would probably never see released outside of a specialty pack. Just so cool. Man-eating Black Shark, two copies. Alright, and finally I want to share with you some cards I picked up at a local game shop. First up... What happened there? I didn't even notice that when I bought it. Hmm, weird. We got Slate Warrior, another video game promo. Level 4. I actually had this guy back in the day. I just, uh, I don't know if I still have it or if I got rid of it or traded it. I, I don't know, but really cool to have this card. Fiend effect. Flip. Increase the attack and defense of monsters by 500 points. Or, increase the attack and defense of this monster by 500 points. The attack and defense of a monster that destroys this monster as a result of battle is decreased by 500 points. So basically this guy gets a 500 attack and defense boost, which is actually very, very powerful as a flip, as a flip effect. So you cannot just summon this guy and he gets 500. You have to set him, hope he survives, which uh, 400, probably not going to. Flip him on your next turn, and then he becomes a level 4 with 2400 attack, which is pretty dang good for level 4, it's just a two-step process, which in today's game, obviously, too slow, you're gonna, it's gonna be eaten or destroyed one way or another. More than likely, unless you're playing a heavy stall deck. Then again, if you're playing a heavy stall deck, you're probably not gonna be running Slate Warrior. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, 2400, level 4, monster. The decrease part could actually be a little bit helpful as played as like a little bit of a trap. Next we have Rocket Warrior, a limited edition from one of the tens. Very cool monster. And then we have Blade Knight, also from one of the tens. Back in the day they used to release tens, they would release like four to six tens at a time. It was crazy back then. Uh, this is actually not 
a promo. It's, it's a card that I needed that they happened to have at the time, and I was pretty excited to find this, because this card is actually goes for quite a bit on the secondary market, and I got it for a very good price there. Lady of the Lake from uh, Shadow Spectres. Very cool. First edition, always important. And the final card added to my collection is the obnoxious Celtic Guardian. <laughs> one of one of the funniest meme cards in all of Yu-Gi-Oh. Absolutely love this card. Is it good? No, but it's funny. And I I, I always that is one ten that I just want the empty ten of just because it's so funny. It's one of the ten promos from back, way back in the day. Let's just take a look at this effect to end it. This card is not destroyed as a result of battle. When this card battles a monster with an attack of 1900 or more, damage calculation is applied normally. So basically, uh, cannot be destroyed by any monster with more than 1900 attack, which, let's face it, is most monsters in this game, this day and age. Um, if you equip this guy with a... Uh, With something like safe zone, you can you can build up a pretty tough, really annoying monster to get rid of. Uh, yeah, that is the obnoxious Celtic Guardian. That was the last one I wanted to share with you. I gotta say, I think I, could, I did pretty good. I was a bit disappointed by Zoa being as bent as he was. Metazoa was fine, but Zoa, I, I don't know. It's a bit more bent than I like. Every other card I was very happy with the condition of, so I, I was very happy. Uh, yeah. Let me know in the comments down below what your favorite promo is from the entire Yu-Gi-Oh! series. And, uh, please hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button, too, if you enjoyed the video. And if you want to see future content like this, you should be able to do s hit. Make sure to hit that uh, notification bell once you subscribe. This has been Booster Box Buster, and I'm signing out. Peace.